Nutrition keeps me healthy. But how can we measure this? The doctor cannot do this, as he can only measure if I have a disease or not. It is actually very difficult to quantify health. The real problem is that we do not have biomarkers of health. Most biomarkers we now use measure disease or processes that lead to disease. How is this possible? Most biomarkers are very tightly controlled, even when conditions that may affect them change a lot. We call this homeostasis. My body tries to maintain homeostasis and many biomarkers only change if the body fails to do this. And this is when a disease may develop. So, maintaining homeostasis is key to health. And our biochemistry does exactly this. Maintain homeostasis under continuously changing conditions. We call this phenotypic flexibility. These changes can be due to food, exercise, temperature, mental stress, medication or toxic compounds, light, etc. Now, the idea is that instead of measuring homeostasis, we should rather measure the capacity to maintain homeostasis. Can we challenge our body and measure the challenge response reaction? Will this tell us how healthy a person is, earlier than the usual biomarkers do? A good example of this is glucose. The most accurate test is to have a person consume a drink with 75 grams of glucose and to track for two hours the appearance and disappearance of glucose in blood. In healthy subjects, glucose levels will not rise too high and return to normal. But if values rise too high or if it takes longer before it is normalized, this is a warning signal that this biochemical machinery is not working properly anymore. Extending this glucose example, we studied the capacity to maintain homeostasis after consumption of a standardized meal, a drink with glucose, fat, and protein. We measured hundreds of parameters in blood and organs and the whole body. In this way, we were able to exactly quantify how the complete biochemistry reacts to maintain and regain homeostasis. Based on the results, we made a detailed biochemical map of all processes involved. It shows the involvement of organs like the liver, muscle, pancreas, adipose, intestines, the microbiome, the metabolism of the various macronutrients, and how all kinds of regulatory processes control this. So, we confirm that our body aims to keep tight control of the important biomarkers, and that for many of these, a change in time course, in response to a challenge, is more sensitive than a change in homeostatic concentration. We also noted something else. People react differently to the same treatment. This is due to differences in genetic background, in body composition, physical activity, eating patterns, etc. We now can accurately quantify how people react differently on the same dietary changes. And by overlaying this on the biochemical map of the person, we have the basis for personalized dietary advice. Taken together, phenotypic flexibility connects to a basic value of health, namely the ability to continuously adapt to changing external conditions. This adaptation process nicely reports on health status in a very sensitive manner that can be exploited in nutrition research and personalized health.